Well, hello everyone. Welcome to Pedro Plays and episode nine of our Football Manager series, uh, where we are taking Gillingham, uh, hopefully to the dizzy heights of the Premier League. Uh, in this episode, we're going to review over the last uh, few games, uh, as well as look at uh, how to improve uh, morale within the squad. Okay, so I'm going to jump straight into uh, reviewing uh, some of the games, uh, some of the games that we went through uh, over the uh, between now and uh, between the last episode and now. Um, I have to uh, admit that this is the second time of recording this uh, this episode. The first time uh, I did sort of stop uh, around about the Fleetwood game. Uh, I did a live coverage of the Coventry and Stevenage game. Uh, however, unfortunately. Um, due to a little bit of a technical difficulty it recorded all the audio the audio was absolutely perfect um, but it was just a black screen um, I currently use um, well beforehand I was using the uh, game capture software um, with Elgato um, and you may, may have seen in the last episode as having uh, some really bad uh, audio quality issues um, so I changed over to OBS which is a free um, a free sort of broadcasting software um, which you know, a lot of people use for streaming but it has the uh, recording uh, ability as well um, however there was a, something to do with one of the settings basically it recorded the audio the audio was perfect a real, real big improvement from the last episode um, but unfortunately to suffer um, with uh, it basically just not showing anything on the screen um, so I've uh, managed to look through YouTube uh, as you do and managed to find a fix so hopefully uh, whilst we uh, unfortunately missed out on being able to see those two games live uh, hopefully I can review them now and this episode will have both the video quality and the audio quality good um, so yeah so let's um, jump straight in so the last game that we did in the last episode was Bristol Rovers uh, you may really, uh, remember sorry that we uh, did lose 3-2 in that one after uh, winning uh, quite a lot of games in the last episode that was a bit of a disappointing uh, result but it was coming actually we were um, you know sort of conceding a few sort of sloppy goals um, the team's breaking on us so um, uh, just looking at the uh, first game in this episode which is Walsall uh, we did end up winning this one 1-0 uh, now uh, if we go to the match here now uh, it does it is registered as a Joe Edwards uh, own goal um, but if we review the goal you will see that Max Hamer uh, played a massive part in it and it did come from uh, from a corner um, when this loads up so one of the things that did change for this uh, for this sort of episode was the tactic actually there's a goal there let's see Max Hamer just bundles it over the line it does come off Joe Edwards so it gets attributed to his own goal. Um, but yeah, going back to the tactics, I wanted to try and shore up the defence a little bit, so I changed the tactic from uh, attacking um, actually to control. Uh, now control is a is um, yeah a mentality if you like, um, where the players actually try and dominate the game. So rather than just um, you know, sort of focusing on attacking, they try and dominate every area of the game, um, and they try and keep possession a lot more. Um, so yeah, it's, it works quite well if you are playing against the weaker side than yours. Um, but one of the things to bear in mind that if you do play a team that is a lot stronger than yours, it can really backfire actually. Uh, but on this occasion, we picked up a 1 0 win and really encouraged actually with the uh, amount of shots that we restricted them to. We restricted them to just one shot on target. Um, it's a big improvement there, and obviously, they, they weren't able to score from that. Um, and, you know, slim win, but it was a, a good win that, no, uh, nevertheless. Our next game was a, a little bit of a uh, local rivalry. It was Gillingham versus Charlton, and um, you can tell the importance of this game because uh, if you look at our attendance here, it was um, very nearly a sellout actually, um, which doesn't very ha uh, happen very often at the Priestfield Stadium. Um, but uh, it was a big, big, important game now. Uh, the last after playing Walsall, we played two teams that were towards the bottom of the table, uh, Charlton being one of them, and uh, Oldham, who we played in the next game, um, was also sort of fairly close to the bottom of the table. Um, now the first uh, started off, and again I did keep the, the control tactic for this one as well. Started off, we got a penalty, and um, Zellalem, great player for us, just come back from injury and just to tuck the penalty away, which gave us a one 0 um, lead at the start. Now Charlton did equalise on about the 30th minute um, from a free kick so it's crossed in, Bauer gets on the end of it and it just sneaks in uh, off the post um, to make it 1-1 at this point. Now, just after that um, Charlton did actually have a goal 
uh, disallowed. So really glad that they had that disallowed, otherwise it could have changed the, the whole course of the game. Um, but on the 44th minute, just before half-time, um, you see that the ball plays out to not. There's a couple of deflections in there. Uh, I think it ends up coming off Nublay's head um, in the end. And... Um, yeah, he's credited with the goal, and um, that makes it 2-1 just before half-time uh, going in at the break. Now, um, just after the break, uh, well, on the 59th minute, Bradley Dax steps up. Uh, again, really good play leading up to it, so good passing, and then a volley there into the bottom uh, left-hand corner um, towards the goalkeeper's right. And that's Bradley Dax's fifth goal of the season. He's been proven to be a really important player for us. And... Um, yeah, so at that point was 3-1. Uh, they did, um, you know, we looked like we were going to just sort of run with it and roll, roll with it, but um, they did get a goal right towards the end. And again, it was a, the break again, as, as we've seen a few times. Um, Jose just getting on the end of it. And um, yeah, 3-2. Um, but fortunately, it was right towards the end, so they didn't have another chance to, uh, to equalise, which was good. So next up we play uh, Oldham, again another team towards the bottom of the table. And uh, actually we had three games in quite close succession, uh, three home games as well. Um, so our home form was, was looking really, really good. Now I did make a few changes here just because the players were, um, were getting really, really tired. And you know I was a little bit nervous about making so many changes uh, because obviously when you do disrupt the team, it can really affect performances. Um, so it was good to, uh, to to see that we did get the win still. So we won 2-1. Um, a few players that were sort of on the fringes before uh, making a start in this one. So you've got Officer Derby playing in the attacking centre, um, centre mid, and uh, Christian Bielek as well in, in defence. Um, he's sort of been on the fringes of things. He is on loan um, to us from Arsenal. Um, so he did play in this game. Uh, now if we go ahead and look at the, uh, the goals here. So Rory Donnelly uh, gets the first goal uh, just in injury time in the first half um, you'll see Scott Wagstaff also not played an awful lot over the last couple of games puts in a great cross which Donnelly gets on the end um, and that makes it 1-0 just before the great uh, just before the break so great great time to score then on the 49th minute uh, Mark Byrne um, does score this goal is an absolutely great goal actually so Bielek plays it out to Byrne edge of the box and then he hits it top left hand corner um, and gives the keeper no chance so 2-0 at this point I uh, was hoping that we would uh, yeah, really sort of see the game out uh, but on the 61st minute uh, they did um, get a goal back um, yeah, through uh, Billy McKay and uh, this goal um, like I say, just pulled through, great cross in. McKay gets in the end of it and manages to score. This goal did make it for uh, a little bit of a nervous uh, finish to the game, uh, but we still managed to hang on to get the 2-1 uh, two one lead. And that actually put us um, right up to second in the table, uh, and just the one point behind Peterborough, who were in the lead at that point. Now after that, we did play Fleetwood. Um, I did put a lot of the first teamers back in. Um, to, to yeah obviously they were a little bit more fresh for this game this was our first uh, away game uh, in quite a while actually and um, unfortunately did end up in defeat Fleetwood were around about mid table um, but they got off to a really good start after the first minute um, you can see they do break quite quickly here uh, and again the same thing just cut straight through the back of the defence and locking on the end of it on the 86th minute uh, Chris Long adds another goal for Fleetwood uh, at this point it wasn't too um, disappointed really with the second goal um, we was really really pushing for the win um, so we had everyone pushing right forward um, and yeah obviously it's going to leave gaps at the back um, but disappointed with the loss um, but wasn't too disappointed with the second goal um, because you know we wasn't scoring and it was a, against the run of play we was putting on a lot of pressure at that point um, but just couldn't unfortunately equalise um, so it's to be expected um, there's always that chance when you do push forward uh, they can break against you so that finished 2-0 there next up we played uh, Coventry um, this was the first game of the uh, first game of of the FA Cup um, first round and um, this one actually uh, uh, like I said, I showed on the live game now as you can see from the uh, from the shots we totally dominated Coventry didn't get a single shot on target they only had one shot throughout it um, and uh, we did miss a penalty on the second minute. Rory Donnelly uh, steps up here uh, to show you the highlight. Um, absolutely awful penalty, I must admit. I won't be taking them for a little while, hopefully. Um, but yeah, you can see the see the penalty here. I was playing at home as well. Um, just taps it wide. Um, you know, not real, not 
much pace on it and obviously it wasn't on target. Um, unfortunately we couldn't break the deadlock. Um, you know, we've been scoring quite freely actually in a lot of games so it was disappointing. Um, but the good news is we're still in the cup. Um, we do still have uh, the replay which will be showed live actually in this episode. Um, a little bit later on um, so we're going to see if we can get one over Coventry now the uh, draw for the second round has already been made uh, as well and if I can go through to it, see who we're going to be playing in the next round so second round uh, so we've either got Harrogate or Doncaster so both of which are uh, lower league opposition uh, it'd be really good if we get Harrogate because they're sort of in the Banorama league um, but uh, yeah Don Doncaster league too so comfortable that uh, you know I, I think if we get past Coventry I think we can get a result against them as well um, which would be great now the game after that was against Stevenage this was in the Checker Trade Trophy uh, Group O and um, you may remember with the Checker Trade Trophy it was very very close actually with uh, all teams uh, other than Stevenage being on four points um, Stevenage uh, unfortunately didn't have any points um, so it's quite looking forward to being able to play those uh, and looking for uh, a resounding victory we did actually end up winning this one 5-0 again I did make lots of changes to the, uh, to the starting lineup. Uh, let's just have a look at the goals here so Cody McDonald did end up with two goals um, as did Manuel Osadebi and um, Lee Martin uh, a player who uh, in real life actually has just come back from injury had a terrible injury um, in pre-season where he ended up sort of dislocating his ankle and you know sort of shattering it or something like that um, really really nasty injury potential to wreck his career actually um, it was um, you know this is in pre-season and uh, you know was scheduled to be out for the whole season um, but actually you know he's come back a little bit early which is fantastic news for him um, he's obviously the, the, the injury hasn't um, been sort of caught um, in football manager uh, so it does mean that we can play him and uh, you know he's, I've played him in this one and you know, he got himself a goal and um, yeah, obviously played a big part up in that last Cody McDonald game, uh, goal as well then. so Manuel Osadebi another player that's recently come back from injury um, on the game and uh, yeah, it's good to see him get a couple of goals as he uh, brings back up to full fitness then. it's a great flick on from McDonald so it does give him an assist there as well and Osadebi got his second uh, goal of the season uh, and then he adds a second one uh, in this game as well. Um, this is obviously on the 90th minute, so it's not quite in order. Uh, but we'll show you his goal first of all. Again, Wagstaff played um, yeah, great in this game, actually got assists. And then absolutely thunder a strike from Oscar Debbie into the top corner. So great to see him uh, getting a couple of goals as he uh, approaches full fitness. And then, like I said, that man, Lee Martin, I did just talk about, he adds a goal uh, on the 47th minute. I think this was our third goal, actually. Really great goal there. It does get it does get a little bit lucky with it. I think it's a deflection there, but um, let's hit it from a, from an awful long way. Um, so yeah, five 0 ended up finishing. Um, so really pleased with with that result and pleased to um, yeah. I think that puts us in pole position in the Czech Trade Trophy group. Um, let's have a little look. Yeah, we are um, leading. So it's us and Peterborough who are our divisional rivals. Um, League One uh, doing quite well there, so it's us and Peterborough are both on seven points. Um, so, yes, yeah, so we're looking forward to hopefully progressing uh, in the Czech Trade Trophy as well. Okay, so our next game uh, is at home to Northampton. Northampton are currently 10th in the league. Um, but before we head on to uh, the live coverage of that game, I wanted just to cover uh, morale and the importance of morale um, amongst our players. I'd like to give uh, a few tips um, on each one, uh, each of these episodes just to mix it up a little bit and help you guys that may be um, fairly new to, to playing football manager. Now, uh, I think there's a direct correlation between uh, the morale of our players and the results on the pitch. Now, um, morale is um, something that comes through uh, basically if you're winning games and the players are going to be happier it can also come from the conversations that we have with players as well if the conversation doesn't go too well as you can see that the morale will drop and it could actually affect not just the player um, but also the rest of the team as well uh, I actually did have a um, an incident with uh, Bradley Tack, uh, our star man um, we did have a, a bit of an incident actually in the, the episode that I unfortunately didn't record um, again, I was talking about morale, and it was a great example. Basically, Bradley Dad came to us um, explaining that he wanted to go to a, a bigger club, um, and I said, 
that I'd actually accept an offer from the big, big club as long as it met sort of our valuation of it. Uh, he wasn't too happy with our valuation, um, and uh, yeah, sort of the conversations ended up breaking down, and that did affect the morale of the whole squad. Now, one of the ways that you can um, bring up the morale is via the team meeting button here, uh, as well, so you can have a team meeting uh, and that can help build. Um, help to improve morale based on that sort of discussions that you have particularly if you have had a run of a few bad games um, and perhaps the morale's really dropped it's a good opportunity to go into team meeting um, to try and encourage the players to make sure that heads don't drop um, because as I said I really believe that morale plays a massive point uh, a massive part of um, you know, the results on the pitch as well um, so do make sure you, uh, you look to address that also if you do have players that are unhappy um, my advice really is don't be too precious with them. Actually, if, if they're a player that you can get rid of, um, then I like to get rid of them. To be honest with you, if they're not happy there, it does. Um, it is infectious actually, and it does affect the other members of the squad as well. Um, as you can see, Bradley Zach at the moment, his morale is currently poor. It was abysmal, which is sort of the, the, the worst one of the lot. Um, but really, he's, um, he's unhappy. Um, just because he wants to move to a bigger club but obviously we can't do too much about it in the next November um, but yeah we might look to sell him in January um, his value is 4.5 million now the reason why the contracts or the talk sorry did break down um, was because I was valuing him at 5 million um, he was valuing himself at 1 million um, and obviously I'm not going to accept 1 million when you know, it's clearly telling me up here he's valued at 4.5 million so you don't want to sell him, so I was quite happy you know, to, to stick at five million. Um, but he wanted us to sell him for one million, so it wasn't going to wasn't going to happen that much. Um, so in January, you know, if any bids do come in for him, maybe I'll accept him. Um, like I say we'll be looking for close to the five million mark um, because I believe if we do get promoted to the championship, he'll be a very important player for us. Um, so I'd like to keep hold of him uh, ideally. But you know, if he is going to Great unhappiness amongst the squad, then you know, I'll play this. So, jumping on to our live game uh, against Northampton, uh, it's going to be a starting lineup for this game. Um, there is a couple of omissions, uh, which is uh, Zelalem. Um, so, you can see he's not quite at the full fitness uh, for this game. Uh, it has come around a little bit too soon for him um, to pick up a little bit of a knock in the, um, in the last game. Uh, Christian Bielek uh, is away on international duty, as is Deji Oshilaja. Um, he's uh, on international duty with Nigeria. Um, so we've got Ryan Jackson coming in at the full-back position. Uh, centre midfield, we've got Billy, uh, Billy Knott, who's um, yeah, played fantastically over the last few games. And Emmanuel Osadebi, as he steps up his uh, return uh, from injury. and see what he can do uh, in this game. So let's jump on in um, to yeah, see how we get on against Northampton. Here we go then, to so kick off at the uh, Priestfield Stadium, uh, third place Gillingham plays, 10th place Northampton. Uh, let's see how we get on, it's interesting to see actually a few of their players quite tired right from the start. Shenton there is carrying a bit of a knock, uh, but has been selected uh, for this game. So we've got Paul Anderson on there as well, number four, former Liverpool player actually, if I remember rightly. Uh, he is uh, obviously starting, I think he's a quite a big player for them, if I remember rightly. Now we get on in this one, keeping a control tactic uh, for this game because it's done us quite well in the last few games. So, you know, aside from the, the game where we played away, um, actually, you know, we've been in really good form coming into this. Looking right in from the start, good head there from Cardio. And then Jackson tries to attempt to clear it but doesn't. Neymar picks up the loose ball there. Can we get them on the break? Wake staff. Effort there from Gore. Uh, you know, trying to catch on the break, sort of keep her off the line, but unfortunately couldn't put it away for him. So I'm going to make a change actually. I'm just going to bring J. Emmanuel Thomas off. He's not had an awful lot of success um, in this game up front, so I'm going to switch him with Cody uh, Cody McDonald. Uh, may also bring off uh, Kincheski at half time as well, so his rate's not been very good. 6.4 and bring on Bradley Garmston. Make a couple of changes just to freshen it up. So there wasn't too much that was happening. I think you know, a couple of fresh faces hopefully will give us a bit more of a uh, attacking impetus. So we'll start the second half then. They've also taken off the guy that had the knock there. And they brought on uh, Rodney McDonald. Let's see if we can get a goal here. 
defensively we're looking quite solid. But uh, you know, we need that goal, don't we, to keep up our, our promotion push. Yeah, Dan McDonald with a chance here. Takes it away from goal, unfortunately. Now they're going to break against us. Oh dear, oh dear, that looks like it could be a red card. Yeah, he's sent off. So we just lost Emmanuel Osadebi. A bit gutting. Um, this is a bit weak at the back now. I want to try and win this game actually, so let's do something a little bit, a little bit radical. I'm going to bring Aimer into midfield. I'm going to go just with three at the back. And uh, I'm going to bring on Mark Byrne in the centre of midfield. Um, let's try and keep our uh, sort of play going, going forward. See if we can get a goal. 70 minutes. Going to go three at the back here. Unfortunately, that was it. So finished nil nil. Uh, not a great game to show life, really, um, this episode. But um, yeah, it did finish nil nil. Obviously, uh, so we did lose a man on 70 minutes, so it was uh, 10 versus 11. Um, Northampton, not a bad side, middle of the table. Um, a bit annoying that we couldn't pick up a win there, uh, but at least we didn't didn't lose uh, after that sending off. So, so some encouragement. We did look very solid defensively. Has to be said, um, but unfortunately not so great at the other end of the pitch sort of going forward. Uh, we are missing Nuble at the minute, who you know has been fantastic actually in the, the last few games. He's a little bit uh, injured at the minute though, so not able to start this one. I think he's due back for the Coventry game, um, so hopefully we'll see if you know if we can get him in if that's going to make a change. So sort of going forward, just hopped the ball up really well and seems to bring out the best of the, the players that are around him. Okay then, so we have the FA Cup first round replay, uh, Coventry versus Gillingham, and um, yeah, I've uh, selected the team here. Now you will see Zellalem is uh, is back for this one. He is uh, you know, approaching uh, full fitness again after his little knock, um, so it's good for him to be back in the in the team. Uh, a little bit of a dilemma with regards to uh, who I was going to have up front, uh, but I have selected Rory Donnelly for this. He's in really good form. Um, do remember him getting on the uh, end of a Scott Wagstaff. Um, assist in that game against Stevenage so I thought you know let's give him a shout for this uh, Frank Nublay, um is on the bench uh, hopefully I'll look to bring him on um, again he's just sort of making it back from uh, from that injury so I uh, didn't think I wanted to risk starting him uh, but I certainly think he can play a, a part later on in the game uh, Christian Bielek is starting in centre back now Bielek has just come back from international duty where he did manage to get his first um, appearance first cap for Poland, just 18 years old, um, so he's on a bit of a high really for, from that, um, so yes I thought this gave him a shot in, in the game, he has played really well actually, all the games he's played for us he's played, uh, played really, really well, um, so let's see how he, how he gets on in this one. Here we go, so kick off at the uh, Rico Arena, uh, Coventry City versus Gillingham, and the last game in the first, uh, first FA Cup round, um, we did absolutely batter them possession wise and you know with regards to our shots we're restricting them just to one shot that was off target um, so hopefully we can get a couple of goals here uh, and I feel quite confident that we'll progress if we can do that obviously it's a little bit of a different game we are playing away right waveform hasn't been quite as good as a home form um, so yeah we'll see how we get on I have changed the tactic slightly I've gone back to the uh, attacking uh, mentality as opposed to the control mentality just because we are playing away from home so I thought let's see how we get on um, like this instead very much sort of tweaking it still trying to you know, see what really works what's going to um, really make this team perform uh, to the best of their ability definitely think it's a tactic that's working but I just think there's some, some minor tweaks that can help it out so at half time then is nil nil no clear cut chat chances for either side um, I'm going to change it a little bit just at half time uh, Jan Manuel Thomas again he's not really played very well um, so yeah, going to bring him off, uh, switch not to the left hand side and uh, bring on Mark Byrne um, into the centre of midfield. Um, let's hope that the second half is going to be better. 
If not, it can go to extra time and penalties. Um, so we'll definitely have a winner at the end of this game, but hopefully we can win it in the 90, 90 minutes here. Here we go, just after the half time here. So Coventry are going to get a, a chance here. Breaking forward, whips it in, and Jones gets on the end of it. 1-0 uh, to Coventry. Not a good start to the second half for us. Um, see if we can get back into it. Hopefully it might make the game a little bit more alive, though. Uh, you see, he just finds a bit of space in the box, gets in front of his man, and then he's able to um, tuck it in with his feet. Coventry have another shot here. Again, same player whipping it in. Reed. Oh, good block there. Was that Bielek? I think it was Christian Bielek there with uh, a very important block. Corners Coventry. Chance now for Scott Wagstaff to break against them. Run into a bit of trouble there. This position back to Coventry. <coughs> Here we go, break again. Managed to get it through Zeller then. Actually, no chance in that. I think it's time now for uh, Frank Newblade to come on and switch in for Rory, uh, Rory Donnelly. <coughs> Just going to keep the one change at the moment. In case you do end up going to extra time, you might need to freshen it up a little bit. It's going to end up in a loss. There we go. Unfortunately, out of the FA Cup, knocked out in the uh, first round replay against Coventry. A really disappointing way to end the episode, unfortunately. Um, but, you know, the main focus for us, uh, let's look at the on a positive light, the main focus for us is the league um, to see if we can, you know, get a result that, that puts into those promotion playoff. Uh, promotional playoff places uh, into the championship so maybe you know this is going to give us a, a, an extra you know few weeks where we're not going to be playing games in the FA Cup which hopefully is going to keep the players fresh for, for a promotional push but disappointed always disappointed to go out of the FA Cup particularly in the first round um, obviously yeah, I, I thought the second round was very much a winnable game uh, but didn't manage to beat Coventry uh, to progress so unfortunately that is it for uh, this episode Thank you very much for watching, uh, everyone. Uh, please make sure that if you did enjoy this episode, that you hit that like button. It uh, really does mean a lot and really helps out. And also, if you've not subscribed, to make sure you hit the subscribe button. Uh, it should be a, uh, a round button that appears on your screen any moment now. Make sure you hit that. And just to stay up to date with all the videos that, that I do. I do not only Football Manager videos, um, but lots of PC games uh, in the sort of simulation management. Um, and uh, yeah, see it building sort of style of game. So do make sure you hit that subscribe button to keep informed with not only Football Manager but the other games that, that I feature on the channel as well. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care.